Hey, welcome back everyone, it's Crazy Welder, and in today's video I'm showing you folks my Liquid Cold Radeon Vega Frontier Edition card. Um, as you can see, this is the card right here. Right now I've got um, a water block, which is just a generic GPU water block um, that goes out into my reservoir, which is just a regular single bay reservoir over here. Um, I've got a little flow meter as well as a kill coil down there. And, uh, and I apologize for the mess here in my room. I've been kind of doing a lot of experiments with my PC. And there's my dual 120mm uh, fan radiator. Now, I'm not going to get into the specifics of, you know, exactly how to build your own loop. I feel like there are tons of videos out there on that already. Um, tons of folks have, you know, done really good tutorials on this sort of stuff. What I am going to do is I'll show you guys the hardware that I bought, um, the pieces that I used, and basically, you know, tell you what temperatures I'm getting and you know sort of explain what I did to actually get this up and running since it wasn't all exactly plug and play um, out of the box so let's move on and I'll show you folks all the different pieces as well as kind of explain the methodology of why I did this and how um, and then we can go back to looking at the loop itself folks so just going through this here uh, one of the first things you're going to need for this graphics card since we're going to be taking away some of the cooling for the VRM um, and some of the other components that typically are cooled by one of the plates that is actually attached um, to the front of the card you're going to need to get some of these coolers now they don't have to be this specific brand or anything but typically any copper VGA heatsink is going to work um, these will end up going onto your graphics card at that point. Um, now what I haven't included in this video is that you also need some adhesive tape um, because the sticky stuff that's at the back of these is kind of crap. Um, you know, so if you just kind of look through here and you look for adhesive tape for, um, you know, thermally conductive adhesive tape, you'll be able to find it. Uh, basically it will make it a lot easier for you to have these stuck on because since the card is upside down, what will end up happening is over time they'll actually fall off and that's really frustrating I've had it happen to me a bunch of times one of them actually got lodged inside uh, my one of the fans from my power supply and it made the fan actually stop so it was really frustrating um, to have that figured out but anyway so this is one of the components um, you know again if you have any questions about how to put it on there are tons of videos out there on setting these up for your specific card and for different various cards that are just out there on the market in general so I'm not gonna dig too much deeper into this um, one of the other things that I like to do is I actually like to get this coolant um, you know this one right now is out of stock but they have you know they have different other ones that you could actually get so that's you know that's pretty cool what is nice about this stuff is that you have it as antifreeze, it's anti-rust, it tends to prevent the scales from forming on the sides of your tubing, which is great for those of you folks that, you know, are in general into, you know, having clean tubing, but it also means that you're going to have less of that scaling and less of that residue on your pump, which means your pump is going to last a little bit longer. You know, obviously you can just use some water and get some additive that makes it, um, you know, non-conductive, but I feel like this is probably the better way to go. If you don't want to use this stuff, you can always use, you know, something like antifreeze for cars. Um, that typically works too. Um, I, I believe also ethylene glycol will work, but it is a little bit thicker. So you may want to consider a faster pump if you end up going that way. But, you know, I just, I like putting this out there as an option for those of you guys that want to get um, cooling. Um, now, I'm not sure if this one is reactive with, um, you know, the different types of lighting that you may have in a case. But if that's something you're interested in, um, you know, consider getting one of these brighter colors here. Uh, moving on, there's also some tubing that you will need. In my case, because of the barbs that I got for all of my connections, I ended up getting that is something... A, that has 3 8 inner diameter and it has one half an inch outer diameter for the hoses. Um, these are great. Um, you know, they do a really good job for, you know, cooling. They're really bendy. I don't like those solid um, pipes that a lot of people use nowadays. Those look cool, but, you know, they're just such a pain to route. And with this, you know, you pretty much guaranteed a good seal when you put them on. Uh, they're nice and long. I ended up getting two of these. Um, just because I had extra piping that I needed to run. It depends entirely on your application. What you can do prior to setting this up is just get some string basically and run it from all the components that you have in the system that you're going to be cooling, uh, meaning run it from the pump 
to the reservoir, to the graphics card, to your radiator, and see, you know, what kind of lengths of piping you'll need. That'll kind of help you determine, you know, how much you'll actually need. But again, if you want more setup on this kind of stuff, there are tons of videos out there on setting up custom loops. So the next thing that I got was um, a flow meter. Now these are pretty important because you want to make sure that if your pump ever fails, you're aware of it right away. These are really obvious because they give you a visual that tells you that the pump is spinning. You know, unless you get one of those fancy new pumps that you know tends to have like a USB out that lets you monitor what's going on, or unless you have a pre-built solution, you know, this is pretty much a must-have. Now I don't know why they changed the picture for this. It actually used to look a little bit different, but the point is you want to get something that's easily seen in your case. You want to make sure that if you have a side um, clear panel that this uh, flow meter is somewhere where it's pretty obvious so you know that your pump is putting out um, you know, water pressure through the system so it's actually circulating the liquid obviously very important. Now I've also gotten these compression fittings. Now you don't have to get compression fittings you can always go with barbs I do like compression fittings because you don't have to mess around with a bunch of zip ties all the time and you're pretty much guaranteed to have a solid seal um, every time you put your piping on. Again, it's entirely up to you, but honestly at you know 10 bucks for four pieces, that's not a bad deal at all. I ended up getting a second set because when I was looking at these, they were actually out of stock for the rest of them. But I do like XSPC. I feel like their components are really high grade. They're a little bit easier to actually uh, mount and install than these, uh, whatever, how, however you pronounce this one. Um, you know, so if you want to get those, they're a little bit more expensive, but definitely totally worth it. And they come and looks like different colors. So depending on what you have in your case, this may be a good option for you. And uh, you know, finally, there's also the um, the actual water block for the GPU. Now one thing of note here is that when I actually bought mine it didn't fully fit on the card so if you can see these little legs right here I actually had to take my Dremel and my drill and sort of you know make a bigger opening here me meaning it went down closer towards the the edge because they ultimately did not entirely fit with the holes on the graphics card itself on the RX Vega um, so if you're gonna go this route that's what you would have to do um, I'm sure that there might be water blocks out there that are compatible with it directly but I kind of like this one because you have the option of either going out the side or out the the top of this thing which makes it really convenient because if you don't necessarily have the space to go down from under your card for the piping you can always go out the side so that's kind of a convenient feature and also it's got a copper block which is really good for you know obviously heat conduction um, and then it comes with a nice uh, bunch of screws to get you going um, and generally it's just a quality piece what you do have to keep in mind about this um, this specific water block is that it will take a while to get to you I think mine took about a month to get to me because they ship from China but rest assured it's been running perfectly fine for like two weeks in my card right now I have not had any leaks. Um, it's a fairly quality built piece. You know, I didn't notice any any major problems with it of any kind. You know, it looks really it looks really nice, and ultimately, because it's clear, you can also see the fluid um, passing through the chamber as well. Now, I I've personally been really partial to the Swift Deck. Um, pumps these pumps are really great they you know they have tons of reviews a lot of people like them and ultimately they have a fairly low failure rate and they pump really quickly so you know it may be kind of a pricier option out there as far as pumps are concerned but trust me you don't want to skimp on your pump uh, one thing I also recommend going and not doing is not getting a pump and reservoir combo that'll save you heaps of trouble down the line because if the pump ever fails and they tend to fail a lot in the um, you know liquid coolers you basically will only have to replace one component as opposed to two and you know a lot of times when the pumps fail they're typically out of warranty for that specific reservoir pump combo that you got so again you know just keep that in mind it's always better to have a separate pump because that's one um, you know less component that you later have to buy if something does go wrong and these are quality pumps as well now something to keep in mind is that 
these actually don't fit the 3 8 inner diameter pipes so what you may need to do is you may actually need to get um, additional piping that actually fits this specific pump in my case what I ended up doing is I took a heat gun to my pipes and I made them expand as much as possible and then I basically put some zip ties around these areas um, up at top and down at the bottom to make the piping fit um, that's kind of a long way to do it and it probably would have been a lot easier to just get proper piping right away but keep in mind that this uses you know half inch inner diameter tubing so just keep that um, in mind as you purchase this pump and maybe you know look for pumps that actually have um, an inner diameter that uh, fits with your specific piping so that's uh, that's one thing there also a kill coil is very very important to have for um, the inside of your tubing it'll generally eliminate bacteria buildup um, and any sludge that you may potentially have over time um, you know you can usually get away with one depending on how much piping you have sometimes you may need two but also keep in mind that they slightly restrict water flow in the system um, so typically one is going to be enough and last but not least here is my reservoir this is a single bay reservoir you don't need too much for this card because of the radiator that I have um, you know the radiator that I end up using was actually from a previous CPU cooler that I had but I'll get into that in a second here so this specific, specific uh, reservoir here is nice because it actually has some baffles inside, so it's really quiet when it operates. Um, again, which means that you know you don't necessarily have to have a very loud water cooling system in your case. This makes it really nice for you. It just fits in a DVD bay drive, so you don't have to mount anything inside of your case. And also, you know, if you happen to have one of those cases where you have DVD bay drives all the way down your case and you have some fans in front of them then um, you know you have the potential to get even additional cooling inside the reservoir in addition to from the radiator itself which can be helpful for some folks you know again it depends on um, you know the sort of stuff that uh, that you have in your case so let's take a look here I'm gonna actually type in um, the specific cooler that I had if I can actually remember the name for it um, let's see if I can type it in here we go. So I use the Corsair cooler because what I've actually had is I had this little pump here fail. So I took this radiator, um, I basically cut off the pipes and attached my own tubing to it. It's a really nice radiator. As you can see, it's got you know really good reviews. Um, generally, people like this cooling system. But since mine failed, I figured I might as well repurpose it. But you don't have to actually get one of these. Um, you can easily go for you know an actual radiator from something like Frozen CPU or Danger Den or even on Amazon they typically sell radiators for these sort of things and there's even you know triple um, triple fan radiators out there available what I don't recommend that you do is I don't recommend getting one of these smaller ones so if you do happen to have one of those it could be a good idea to go for a bigger reservoir at that point um, but ideally you'd want to get for something a little bit thicker um, so that will provide additional cooling for your card because stock um, these cards when the liquid cooled edition came out actually came out with a you know basically liquid cooler that's you know approximately this sort of width on it so you know you want to make sure you get something as close to stock as possible or ideally even bigger so you know just something else to keep in mind here that that's the way they want to go I think triple fans are a little bit overkill but the benefit of having a triple fan radiator is that you can run them you know significantly quieter because you'll be able to spin down the fans and still get you know really good cooling but it's entirely up to you so just keep in mind that if you get something smaller you'll probably need to have a bigger radiator um, you know to cool this card down or your fans will have to spin a heck of a lot faster to provide the same level of cooling so now you might be wondering you know why at this point um, I ended up going this way and liquid cooling this card the uh, end result is basically because they run really hot so you want to make sure that you have something that is able to cool this card down without it starting to throttle back and uh, you know I, I noticed that on some games this card will overheat and start to throttle a little bit so having a liquid cooler on there helps out a lot um, now obviously uh, this card by itself if you take a look at it actually it's um, it's kind of nice because they do come with a nice cooler so what I'm talking about specifically is that these coolers actually have a uh, specific specific type of you know radiator on there which uses some kind of phase change cooling so if you look at the RX Vega 64 
and you look at the cooler that they have, they'll actually tell you that these cards come with a really, really nice system on there. I keep forgetting the actual name for it. Um, if I can find it, I think it's a Vapor Chamber Cooler. Let's see if I can dig this up right now. Yeah, I can't type today. But as you can see, the heatsink is made of aluminum cooling fins attached to a large copper vapor chamber. And so what that means is that the stock cooler is actually pretty good at dissipating heat, but it's still not quite enough because these cards consume a lot of power. The result of consuming that much power is that they generate a lot of heat. And basically one of the best ways to manage that is to actually have it be liquid cooled. Now, as you can see, there are obviously you know, full solutions that cover the whole card out there. But you're going to be spending a lot of money. And if you look at the price of Vega right now, considering how expensive it is, spending another $200 is uh, kind of ridiculous just for, you know, another liquid cooling solution. Now, arguably, I spent, you know, about $160 on my setup as opposed to what you see here. So it's still, you know, not going to be the cheapest thing. But the nice thing about my components is that they're not specific to this card. So if I do get another card, I'm able to just swap out, um, you know, the water block, for example, and get something else. That's one component that I have to replace to get it up and running with a different um, GPU. And the nice thing is that if I want to, I can also use this for CPU cooling, again, by just swapping out the water block and going that route. And uh, I'll actually end up doing the temperatures for this card in another video. I don't have the temperatures for this card stock, but you can see a ton of reviews online um, for the Vega Frontier Edition that show you the temperatures of the card. So you can kind of, sh you know, do some research there yourself. But I will show temperatures of the card running with this cooling setup, and you can kind of see what happens there. So hopefully this video helped you out to make a decision on whether or not you want to, you know, kind of go ahead and do liquid cooling for this card. Once I publish my video that has the temperature readings from the card itself, um, I think that will be a more compelling reason to see why you'd want to go that route. Um, as it stands right now, the card has been running perfectly. The, uh, the loop never seems to get very hot, which is great, and uh, the whole system is incredibly quiet. So if you want to go this route, you know, feel free to shoot me some questions in regards to how I did this or if you have any other general questions about, you know, this card or how it performs, you know, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you folks in my next video.